Yes, hello again, welcome back to Classic Dirt Bike TV and uh, as you can see we're back here in the CDB TV studios we've been quite busy lately between uh, the Drumlandrig Castle event and of course our uh, fantastic weekend away at Northern Ireland but we're back here in the studio once again uh, doing uh, what we do best here taking a look at these old uh, vintage race bike. So next up we're going to take a look at a bike that I came across at one of the Scottish Classic uh, round events this year. So uh, let's jump straight into the video and take a look at uh, Alfie Forrest's lovely uh, 1986 CR125 Honda. Okay so this uh, quite nice looking 1986 Honda CR125 is uh, young Alfie Forrest's race bike and despite maybe a couple of non-original parts fitted onto the bike this is still a very fine example of one of these iconic uh, two-stroke screamers from 1986. Now prior to Alfie purchasing this bike this little Honda 125 actually spent most of its life in the USA where it was uh, very little used and so Alfie's now putting the bike back onto the racetrack where he'll race it in the now popular pre-1989 125 class with the Scottish Classic Motorcycle Racing Club. Although looking back to the previous 1985 CR125 Honda which was still a very good bike at that time but it lacked ever so slightly in the horsepower department and although uh, this bike here still kept the same basic engine from 1985. It was Honda who then worked their magic on the internals just to try and coax a few more ponies from this uh, relatively small and compact engine. Now it's also said that the suspension on the front and rear of these 86 uh, 125s was okay for its time but uh, Honda still kept the Kayaba forks on these bikes while their bigger brothers, the CR250s and the CR500s were being fitted with the much better Showa front forks and uh, we'll talk a bit more about the suspension uh, later in this video but overall the 86 CR125 was just a great little bike because it had the looks, it had the handling and of course that fantastic little liquid cooled two-stroke motor and in terms of 1986 it was the bike to have if you wanted to race in the 125 class. So let's uh, start by taking a look at this 125 two-stroke engine which was uh, said to uh, throw out around the 26 horsepower mark which was very good for such a small engine and uh, this engine also had a mid-range that just seemed to go on forever and ever and there were very few other 125s that could actually match it for power in 1986. Now the sparks for the engine were supplied by a CDI electronic ignition system and the fuel was also fed into the motor through a six petal uh, reed valve uh, block and these 86 uh, CRs also had a much larger airbox than the previous 85 uh, model. Now our engine here is fitted with a key in flat slide carburetor but I'm not 100% sure if this is what was actually fitted to these bikes uh, back in the day but uh, the chances are that this is correct because it does seem to fit uh, perfectly with this motor. Now the clutch once again was uh, basically the same as the 1985 bike but uh, Honda then added an extra plate uh, just to beef it up and to help it cope with the slight increase in horsepower over the older uh, bike. Now the transmission once more was a six speeder so uh, the rider certainly had more than enough cogs to dance up and down on when he was uh, trying to keep this motor uh, buzzing and in that sweet spot which of course uh, was the mid-range. 
And again, uh, the 86 CR125 Honda engine had the ATAC power valve fitted in the exhaust port, which was basically just a little subchamber of the exhaust manifold uh, to boost the head pipe uh, volume. But to give it its full name, it was called the Automatic Torque Amplification Chamber, or ATAC for short. But I have to say that uh, overall, uh, this was just a stonking little two-stroke power plant and it certainly had power and revs in absolute bucket loads. And if you kept that little engine buzzing and on the pipe, then there wasn't really much that would pass you in the 125 class in 1986. Now you can also see here that uh, young Alfie's 125's certainly been in the motocross wars as his expansion chambers uh, still sporting some of those dings and dents from a previous racing life over there uh, in the USA. But I have to say that uh, the exhaust parts on this bike certainly still look like they're the real deal and could quite easily be the original Honda parts from 86. So let's get back to this front suspension. Now, as I said, the CR125 Hondas in 1986 kept the uh, Kayaba standard forks on the 125s, while the 86 250s and 500s were being fitted with the much better uh, Showa forks. And uh, these Kayabas uh, did have Honda's TCV uh, damping system or travel control valve uh, system if you want to give it its uh, full address. Although these front forks were certainly good enough to cope with most uh, racing situations, but they could certainly bottom out or in extreme conditions even hydraulically lock on uh, when big landings uh, were taking place, but they were still quite raceable and perfectly adequate for a lighter smaller uh, 125 bike. So as we move on to the back end of our 86 CR125, we once more had a Kayaba single uh, monoshock uh, system, which uh, at the time was, uh, I think it was said to offer around 16 compression and about 22 rebound uh, settings. And uh, once again, although the shock was uh, decent enough in normal racing configuration. When it was worked very hard, it could also uh, bottom out if you were a rider who liked your airtime when you were riding your little uh, 125. And uh, that rear shock, of course, was bolted onto Honda's well-proven uh, Pro-Link rear swing arm, which again, for 1986 was said to be among some of the best rear suspension systems that you could get on a motocrosser in that year. And even yet, an 86 Honda still opted to use an old school drum brake on the back of this uh, 125, while of course going for the much more uh, up-to-date and more modern hydraulic disc brake here that was fitted onto the front end. But nevertheless, even although this rear magnesium drum brake was still pretty much old school, it was perfectly suited to R125 because this was a relatively light little motorcycle to throw around and slowing it or stopping it, it wasn't exactly a problem for this rear drum brake system. But that mediocre Kayaba rear shock still performed well enough when it was bolted onto this superbly engineered Pro-Link rear swing arm system. Now again, the bike's chassis did have a small radiator fitted to either side of the frame down tube with these air scoops here just to direct the oncoming air into uh, cool the radiators. And once again, a plastic fuel tank for 19 86, which normally held enough pre-mixed fuel for even the very longest of 125 races. 
And uh, as I remember, I think these CR125s did have quite a decent seat fitted to them, of course, extending up the rear of that uh, fuel tank. And uh, that design was, of course, so that the rider could shift his weight from the back of the bike uh, right to the front in order uh, to help the machine make sharper turns whenever uh, it was required. So as we move on to the business end of Alfie's bike, the front brake uh, naturally, of course, is operated hydraulically by this uh, cylinder uh, fitted on uh, to the handlebars. And actually, the handlebars is just one of the non-original parts that are actually fitted onto Alfie's bike. But you're going to be a very busy man with your right hand on this throttle gasser because keeping that small 125 motor buzzing is certainly the name of the game when you're riding at one of these 125s on the racetrack. And in comparison, of course, a cable-operated clutch, but uh, you'll certainly not need arms like big Arnie Schwarzenegger to operate this clutch, because the one thing that these little Hondas do have is a featherlight uh, clutch operation, but uh, again, just for uh, super safety, an engine kill switch has been fitted just in case you need to stop those little ponies uh, running if you ever encounter a serious problem with that uh, Honda motor. Although I have to say for 1986, these were still a pretty awesome little bike, but uh, they weren't perfect, of course, by any means, and they did have their little niggles and idiosyncrasies, just like any other motocross race bike of their day. But as a racing package straight from the crate, you could basically just get this bike and then fill it with fuel and put it straight on to the racetrack. And if you were prepared to wring its neck and work it hard, then it could certainly help you onto one of those podium spots at the end of the racing day. And who knows, maybe if Honda had chosen to fit the much better Showa suspension system onto these smaller 125s, then maybe this bike could have ended up being the perfect small class race bike of that year. Although even with that uh, quite soft and spongy suspension on the front and at the back, this was still an awesome little race bike because it did have an almost flawless chassis. It certainly had the looks when it was painted in this flash red colour scheme, but it was that uh, superbly sweet liquid cooled motor that was the star of the show for 1986 because for such a small compact two-stroke, it certainly was up there with the very best of all the 125 power plants in 1986. 86. And even although this bike here of Alfie Forests may not be 100% original from 1986, but uh, the main thing is that it's just great to take a look at possibly the best of the 125s from that fantastic mid-80s era. Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, taking a look there at uh, Alfie Forests. Uh, quite nice uh, 86 CR125 Honda, another one of those iconic evolution machines from uh, the mid-1980s. Now, of course, we do have some uh, more racing to cover before the end of the 2022 racing season. And of course, in between times, we'll be uh, giving you these uh, old school classic dirt bikes uh, to take a look at. So uh, if these are the kind of bikes that you like to look at here on YouTube, then I hope you will consider uh, subscribing to my uh, YouTube channel. Now, next up, we're going to take a look at another Evolution bike from that 1980s period. So uh, coming up next here on CGB TV, we'll be taking a look at uh, this lovely 1985 uh, RM125 Suzuki. Now, this is a bike uh, belonging to Chris Kirkbride. And uh, this is one of the bikes I came across at a recent Scottish Classic uh, race event uh, in the Scottish border town of Lockerbie. So we'll be taking a look at this uh, lovely RM125 when we return here 
to classic dirt bike TV. But once again, thanks very much for watching my video content and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if these are the kind of bikes that you like to look at here on uh, YouTube. So until the next time, it's goodbye for now.